Mark Arman with VIB TV. We're here today with Pastor Matthias Esumimi. He is a candidate for Vallejo City Council, and we're here uh, on Muir Island in Alden Park. It's a beautiful day, and we are going to ask uh, Pastor Esumimi a few questions. Thank uh, you. So, uh, Matthias, can I call you Matthias? Yeah, that should be fine. All right. Um, tell me a little bit about yourself. Um, you, you originally came from uh, Nigeria, is that correct? Yeah, I came from Nigeria. So Let me give you a story yeah, of myself. Give, give me a little background. Um, my name is Matthias Esumeme. Uh, I came to the United States in 1976. I was in the Air Force in Nigeria. I was trained in London. Okay. I had my license as an aircraft engineer. Okay. I retired as a pensioner in the military in Nigeria Air Force. and. Uh, after my retirement, I work with another company. We produce an aircraft in Kaduna, in uh, in uh, IEP. I was in a management management position there. So, uh, what, what exactly did you do in in, in management? Um, what were you supervising? Uh, not really supervising, but uh, being in management does not mean you you supervise. But I mostly work on the field, uh, on the field, on the technical part as an uh, aircraft. So you, were, engine, you were doing maintenance on, on, on yes, maintenance, aircraft power yeah, plants, uh, that kind of thing? And airframe. I, that's, I specialize on that. Mm -hmm. uh, power plant and airframe, that's what I specialize upon. But, um, do, you, do you still fly? Oh, no, no, no. I don't do it any no. longer for a long time. You, because, you uh, stay on the ground, but you, you, fig, you yeah, fix no, them. But no, 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 not that way. But really, when I was in the Air Force, I'm like a, a flight engineer, a board engineer, which when we go out of the state, we follow the pilot to maintain the aircraft when they are flying. I see. Yeah. So you and were a uh, ground support and ground and support so on. also that one. Uh, I was uh, a specialist on some of the aircraft, which and the German aircraft, United States aircraft, and uh, British aircraft. I was a specialist trained for that. And uh, after my 18 years in the military, I left the military. I'm 18 years in the military, yeah, in, Ni years. in Nigeria. Nigeria Air Force. Wow. I left the Nigeria Air Force and um, I came to the United States with what, my wife. What, what made you decide to come to the States? Um, I decided to come to, to, to have, have traveled a lot. London, Germany, Italy. I just, I came here with a citizen, as a citizen. And I need another environment because I'm very straightforward man. I don't like games. Um, I love to be frank when doing things. Well, I, I, yeah. I think we all appreciate that, yeah, you're a politician. Be yeah, because that's why I find it difficult to bend with a lot of people. If you play game, especially when you hire privilege, in a privileged place, and you think it's your responsibility to help somebody, and you refuse to help. I don't like that. I got irritated. Not uh, because people, everybody has mistake. That guy might have made a mistake, but we don't use that mistake to castigate him or to download him down, because that does not jive in the presence of the living God. I believe when a man fall, he can rise up. That's what I believe. And uh, I live in the United States with my wife. I have four children. I came to the United States. We settled in Oakland. Uh, what, brought, what brought you to Vallejo? OK, I'm coming. I will get to that. OK. Uh, I was in Vallejo. I was supposed to have bought a home in, Vallejo, in Oakland. But I was not comfortable with Oakland character of way, especially if my children should come to join me in the United States. I want an environment which is more conducive, more safer, and more loving. I asked, I've been searching a lot of places, and I found out Vallejo was more conducive for people to, to live in. I moved from Oakland, and I bought a house in uh, Vallejo, and uh, I moved to Vallejo and enjoyed it. Uh, How long have you lived in Vallejo now? Uh, I came here in 96. So right when the military base closed, right? Yeah, right I, did, uh, I do, really, I did not even take note of that. Because right. when you are new in a place, you see search in your ground. Right. Because you can't jump because you came to a place, try to prove you know so much. 
You have to learn for the people you met in the city. Be humble and be, have humility. Learn to learn. And uh, we came here. I enjoyed Vallejo. And uh, I feel it's a better place for me. I've been so active with the community in Vallejo, helping the homeless. So you've done some work with the homeless? Can you yes. tell me a little bit about that? OK. Uh, I have uh, one homeless by name Ryan. He was homeless. He just got out of jail, saw him in the street. I asked him. I talked to him. I called him. He said, white guy. I said, do you like the way you're doing things? He said, no. First of all, I talked to him about the word of God. I find he was interested in the word of God. I brought him closer to me. And uh, when I brought him closer, what I did was I supported him in at least two times meal every day. But this is the, through, your, through your church? Mm, not through or my just, church, just personally. personally. But uh, there's one thing he cannot do. He cannot stay with me. I would have given him a room. But he has a club with the parole officer when he was released from jail that right. uh, there's a limit he cannot stay with the environment of people. And uh, I personally, I told the parole officer why. Say because of the crime he has committed. And uh, I helped him a lot, even to secure a job for him. And uh, talk to somebody, I told him, do you have your GED? He said, no, I said, okay, I'm gonna pay for you to have your GED. I took him to, um, what's the name of the street? Uh, California Road. That is by Vallejo uh, Adult Education, mm -hmm. to enroll. I said, go there. I took him there. Do you what you want to do? I'm going to pay for you to enroll. I want you to have your GED and be a good person in our city. He agreed. He has been coming to church, doing things good, but later he messed up when he saw a girlfriend. And I, I found another guy who is his friend, a black guy, and I, dis, I do the same thing for that one. But one thing I found out that accommodation hinder many of them. When they have- Right, there's a real shortage of homeless yes, shelters. Thank you. Yeah. When they have nowhere to sleep, wake up, be able to be responsible, I said, we have a lot of home that is empty. How can't we give some of these to these people and mentor them, monitor them, so that the way they live in that place will be better? So, so if you were uh, uh, if, if you were elected to city council, uh, is, uh, I guess then the homeless is going to be one of your major uh, issues. Homeless will be one of my major issue. My major issue mostly crime, mm -hmm. crime, because a lot of leads to crime. When we talk of crime, a lot of people don't go to school because the criminal background. A lot of people are homeless because they are criminals. A lot of people have bad head because they are criminals. Why? They are under on on drug addict. And when you're on drug, sure. I, don't, I don't believe how can you as an individual or group of people think how you to better ease uh, our right, life right. is very difficult. Well, that, the, kind of the things you've mentioned bring up a, 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 a couple of questions at least. Okay. Um, you know, w one that comes to mind is when you, you, you talk about the issues of uh, crime in Vallejo. And interestingly, uh, tomorrow at the city council meeting, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Chief Nicolini, is, is, the police chief, is going to be doing a presentation. And one of the interesting points of the presentation is that, uh, uh, quite frankly, crime is maybe not as high as people think it is. It's actually, uh, the numbers are, are not that bad. They're not great. We certainly could use improvement. But it, it's a little bit of positive news in a sense that the police, with the police we have, they seem to be doing a pretty effective job. Uh, not to mention, I mean, there are a lot of other things. I think a lot of people have stepped up with neighborhood watch groups and so on. So it seems to be having somewhat of a positive impact. That said, um, when you talk about crime, do you think the, the solution to reducing crime is more police? Is that what you're going to work towards? Do you, what's your thought about that? 
Uh, I personally, I don't believe in uh, reducing the police. Mm -hmm. We know what is called uh, na neighborhood watch is right. very, very important. Those neighborhood watch, how do we organize them? It is those volunteers who volunteer by themselves to be a member. But individual neighborhood, neighborhood, uh, neighborhood watch is more important if individuals set up their aims, their agenda, and their focus that we need in our city, crime we need to stop. Right. We should look beyond living in a crime society. Okay. And how do we do that? Let's set up within our street, know who and who is in the street. When we know who and who in the street, we can know who is a new person in the street. So, so community involvement, know your neighbors, that kind of thing. Community involvement is very, very important than setting up neighbor, neighborhood watch is good. But there's a limit they can do. Of course. Because if we say we eradicate police, we reduce police. Let's say we have two police in Vallejo. The police going to die on time because we, we do you want the two police to be walking? Well, I, I, I got a question for you. Um, a couple of things about, about uh, issues with the police. Uh, in a city council meeting in, I don't remember the date, but Chief Nicolini made the statement, and uh, it's actually it's on the video, uh, that it, he had spoken to the, the Police Officers Association, the union, and he stated that their position is, and I, I quote, cut the staff as much as you want, we want to be paid. So I, I wanted to get your thoughts on that, that statement by the police chief uh, with regards to the police union and their, that position. What, what are your thoughts about that? And that fits into the context of the question about contracts coming in 2012, mm -hmm. the fact that we have some of the highest paid police in the state, mm -hmm. and the question of how to afford police and not just afford them because a lot of people are talking about measure B and saying more money but it's a question of spending the money the right way Thank so you. so my question is how do we keep our expenditures under control in, in a way that's sensible because the position that the police union has taken mm -hmm. cut the staff as much as you want we want to be paid obviously hasn't worked and when the police contract was coming up for approval Many people got up and objected to it because the thing that people realized is that it's going to factor in raises. Did you know the police got a 6.29% raise last year? Mm -hmm. And they got another 2 point something or 3% this year. It's still, I think they're still deciding on the exact number. So over 8% raise in two years in a recession to some of the highest paid police in the state. And of course the result was that there's been a reduction in numbers uh, over the period of time. So I wanted to get your thoughts on that and how you're going to approach, if you're elected, the, the, the contracts in 2012 and find a balance between paying these guys well, which we want to do, and having wages that are continuing to be class leaders uh, in a city with Vallejo's challenges. So how, how do you find the balance? Uh, with the economic right now and uh, the budget constraint in, the, in our city of Vallejo, uh, that statement of the police boss, I do not buy it. You know what? We can't you, pay. You don't, you don't buy the I don't the buy statement. the idea. Call the police. We, go to, we want to be paid. Right. You don't get... I, I think most people don't. Yeah, I don't buy that idea. I will tell you the truth. So in other words, what I'm saying is, you know, there's... How, how, how would you approach cultural change and, uh, you know, bring, bring those expenses to a reasonable level so that we can have more police? Okay. There's one thing I believe we can do. There should be a blueprint and a brainstorming. When we have blueprint, have a brainstorming. A brainstorming is that how much does it cost the city of Vallejo? to pay this police as much. How much is the budget? Because we right. can't spend all our resources on one basket. When 
the, the, the on one tree, when the branches is many, it's not possible. We have a lot to do with the city. If I'm elected, one thing I do is, there's a room to employ more police. I will stick on that. We might not be able to pay them as much, but we'll be able to employ as many. Let me tell you one thing. If we have bike, police riding bike in this city, and you see a policeman every bike, corner. Bike police? Yes. Crime, we used to. It's a shame that yes. got canceled. Crime will be reduced. We have horse police. Crime will reduce. We have police driving cab, driving a taxi. Crime will reduce. Police driving other vehicle, not to retain police, but with a different mark on it as police. Our police should be involved in the communities. And that is how you evolve. Well, it's, it's tough because most of them don't live here. Yeah, they, they, thank you. One thing is before we can stand as a policeman in the city, you must be our citizen of this oh, city. There's a legal problem with that. There, can't we re can't require it. We, we make sure we are. You know why? Because you ran to somewhere else and stay somewhere else and you came here to intimidate our people because you're a policeman, that you need to stop. You have to be a member of the society to know what is going on in our society. Because you have to be used to them. Like now, you want me as elected as a member, I want me to live in Vacaville because Vacaville, Vacaville is more actually, safer. Actually, most of our police live in Vacaville. But that is wrong. Mm. We, and they have to live in our city to know what we are mm. going through. What, about, what, what do you think about the idea? I, I mean, legally, we can't, we can't require them. Uh, to live in the city, and and there's only the I agree we cannot require right. them, but there's a way to make them to compare to live. Right. So, there's there's so you, a system. So what you're saying is kind of give them, try to give some incentives to stay here. Or something yeah, like that. we give the incentive. Take an example now. I will ask a policeman, is your wife working? If he said no, let's get your job, your wife job here. Stay with your wife here. <laughs> <laughs> so use the wife for leverage yeah, if necessary. Well, yeah. Oh yeah! If, if take an example, if our standard of education is improved, the policemen will live in Vallejo. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They the policemen they are living in Vacavi because their children are safer. If this city is safe, they will remain here. I'm telling you, okay. nobody wants to live far from job. If because they find out that who wants his children to go to school and be shot. So, so, I mean, obviously education is a big thing for you. Tell me, uh, going back to you just briefly, a, a little bit about you, your educational background aside from the, the, the military. Okay. Uh, I'm in a Europe profession. When I came to this country, I started fresh. I have my A8 computer science. I have uh, mm -hmm. my... Where, where did you go to school? He, uh, I was in Solano. I uh, know, Alameda College. Before I finished at E College. And uh, I have my BS in... Uh, uh, Debray University. What, what university? Debray University. Oh, Debray. Debray right, University. It's a technical university. Sorry, thank you. Gotcha. So I finished my master uh, BS there as a technical management, and I finished my master degree, degree in information system security in Colorado Technical University in Colorado Spring. Okay, so you're uh, you're a computer security guy. Oh, I'm a heavy one. Okay. Guru, when they say guru, I am. And um, I have a lot of license, project management, accreditation for CCAPS. I have an A plus. I have a lot of accreditation. I'm a member of IBBA. I member of a lot of organizations, which help me in a lot of different experience of project management and uh, so you're, analysis. So you're a tech guy. I'm a tech guy. What, what about? Uh, the idea of technical schools and things like that in Valaya, where do you where do you stand on that? Oh my gosh, that would be the best thing I have. If it, technical school in Vallejo, not everybody loves high school. Not everybody loves university. Technical school would be the best. Why is Jama advanced in technology than most country? Because of the technical school they have. That's why Jama is more advanced in most technology than most countries. If you see, they go to technical school. If we can have one or two technical schools here, it will do us a lot of good. 
And when we have schools where people are not idle, thinking of how to do crime, how to do drug, keep them busy one way or the other. So more, up, more opportunities, more up, educational More education, more, is, more a lot of opening for job. People can create job. People who come from other city to do their auto repair here. When we have so many of them and with cheaper rate, right. it's going to help everybody. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, now one question that, that I have for you. A lot of, of people that are running for the first time, they have a lot of positive ideas, and I think you do, and, and a lot of enthusiasm. And oftentimes, people, when they get in, they're, they're very daunted by the mechanics of government, by the complexity, by the, the law, the procedural uh, roadblocks and things like that. Do you have any experience that you think uh, um, qualifies you for that? Uh, and, and any background um, committees or things that you've been on that, that give you um, some understanding or insight into the mechanics and the, the, the bureaucracy, really? Yeah, um, I have. Due to my research, you know what causes, when you are elected, you can't perform. You follow, quote, unquote, I say the mafias. When I say the mafia, those who endorse you, they want You're saying to, mafia. I, when I say mafia, I do not mean uh, those type of war mafia. Maybe I just say those people who endorse you. Let's eliminate mafia. Those who endorse you. Like if you so endorse. your constituency. Yes. Uh, who, if you endorse and me. your supporters. You might support us as a group of organization, companies. What do you expect from me? I have to dance to your tune. You like it or not? Because. You well, support me financially, right. you supported me with people, but if I go one-on-one -on -one to individuals and I told them, I'm going to work for you, I don't seek endorsement. Because if I'm endorsed, I'm, down, I'm bound by all ways to please them. That is why we have problem. Not that those people are like they can't do anything, but they are being cycled by endorsement that is where we have the problem so so in other words what what, what you're saying is that is that you see um special interest money and influence as a problem in vallejo as a problem not only in vallejo in the whole world sure and that is why the common people are still suffering you see because the money is see company they want the way they want they want they want it the way they want it not the way to please the common people. They don't care about the common people, sure. but they care about how much will I get to take my wife to London on vacation? How much will I get to take my girlfriend to on her somewhere else? But the people who are buying those things are the common people. You are using them. And they are still suffering. The same problems still remain in Vallejo. We need a change of ideas. Our perspective should be different dimensions. Not focusing, this is the way Vallejo is being run. We want it to be run the same way. We need a change. A change that emulates the common people. They attract the common people. I belong to this city. Why people are leaving, uh, leaving Vallejo? I, I met a woman said, I will be leaving Vallejo to San Francisco or oh, this. I said, no. Are you telling me, tell me a home when there's no problem? Sure, I said, can place. you say any home there there's no problem? He said, yes. Go there, you see their problem, you will run back to Vallejo. Go to Hokla, ho, oh, oh, ho, oh, ho, you will run back. Go to Richmond, ho, oh, oh, ho, oh, ho, you will come back. Tell me do you, who. Do you, do you think some of the things in the media, the negative things in the media about Vallejo are, are overblown? I think most of the media, some of them are reporting what they see. Some are reporting what they want to say. I, don't, I can't say whether the media report negative, report positive. I personally, I deal on it and I don't read newspaper. Okay. <laughs> if I want to read newspaper, I read on internet. I'm well, always with computer. I, I, I read it on the internet too. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I saw a lot of things, some story they gave about somebody. I know that was a lie. I know because I've heard this man spoke. 
have hardened the way that they are. They give negative. If our media can be positive thinking, the city can be positive thinking. If they think positive to this, they, if you do, say your child is bad, and you tell the public your child is bad, your child is going to be bad. When you say my child, he is not there, it will be there with positive thinking. That is what is happening in our city. Mm -hmm. So the power of positive thinking. Now, yes. now just going back a little bit, uh, it leads me to another question. You, you talked about the, the problem with uh, special interest groups and, and influence and things like that. And you look at Vallejo, it's a very diverse city. We've got all, all kinds of people, all colors, uh, all fa different faiths, different yes, groups yes. and things like that. So what I wanted to bring up and ask you and just try to have an open discussion about, now you're, you're part of the Vallejo Faith Organization. I am. Okay. And it's no secret that there's been, there's been tension between the, the, the gay community and the Vallejo Faith Organization and some of the different positions. So I wanted to see if we could uh, talk about that a little bit, if that's okay oh, with yes. you. And, and maybe build some bridges and try to, try to gather, gain some understanding. Uh, you know, there has also been um, some issues brought up um, about um, the ITN and Harvest Evangelism and Ed Silvoso and some of his activities in, in Uganda. So I wanted to get your thought because as, as a council member and a man of faith, obviously we have a gay community in Vallejo as well. And I, I wanted to see what your thoughts are and how you would represent the, the gay, gay members community. of our community as well, because they're they're part of the constituency. So give, give me your give me your thoughts about. Let me tell you one thing: um, gay, straight, whatever, we are created by one God. They choose to live their lifestyle. I choose to live my lifestyle. It's left for them to take what they believe. I may not like what they are doing. I need to love them. What can't motive is love, not likeness. I may not like you, but I need to love you for who you are and what you are and your belief. I you understand me. I am married. I love to be married. They are gay. They love to be lesbian or gay. Whatever they choose is their own standard. But one thing we should look into gay, lesbian, or straight. How do we live our life? One thing I believe is if everybody become gay, do you believe the population of America will be reduced? Well, I mean, that's, that's <laughs> not going to happen. <laughs> no, no, it will. It will. Take an example. Some countries in Europe are looking for population because they refuse to have children. They are not gay or lesbian, but they refuse to have children. Some people are even say, the more children you have, the more money they give. Well, gay people have families too. No, no, okay. I know gay people have family, but who produces no man and woman produce their family? Somebody else produce those children. But can two women produce a child? Well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> In a sense, you know. How? I mean, how? You know, there's, how there's, does. Uh, there's, the, there's adoption, there's I don't want to talk about what is supposed not to be on TV, you know? Yeah. I'm not. Let's forget about adoptions. Yeah. Can a man and a man produce a child? Not, not without intervention, obviously, no. Thank you. Yeah. Can a woman and a woman produce a child? No, of course not. Thank you. But if we all start becoming gay and lesbian, our population will increase. We will be overthrown. Yeah, I, I don't. I, yeah, I don't. I don't think there's any any risk of uh, there's a a risk. population collapse. No, because it is a risk. Really? You know why? I will why? tell you there's a risk. It might not be in our generations. The generation to come. I mean, why? Why would you think that 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 everybody is going to become gay? No, no, no. I did not say everybody going to become gay. Right, but I say if everybody become gay and lesbian. Right. And we start stopping having children. Where do we have children to adopt? There will be none. <laughs> yeah. But it's kind of a moot point because it's never going to happen. No, I mean, but you it's know, a hypothetical. it's a good excuse. It will not happen. But it, it can happen. Let's say I'm giving an example. But, but we're basically. Let, okay, let yeah. me give an example. Now. In a family, a man has 
five children. And the father, before he died, he said, I want them, my legacy to remain on earth. We have only one legacy, the name of the family. Mm. Not the home you build, not the car you have, the, mon the name of the family to remain. Say the whole, those family become gay and lesbian and all die. The family is eradicated. Yes or no? Well, I mean, <laughs> yes. it's, you know, it's, it, it's, kind of a, it's kind of a moot point, really. I mean, yeah. to be honest. Yes, it's a good point. No, no, it's a moot point. In I other say, words, I say a in moot other words point. it's a it's it's a, dumb it's, point. A, it's a point that has no basis. It has no basis. It has no 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 relevance, really. It will. I mean, there have been there have been for basically a long time, maybe like since forever, there have been okay, gay people. Okay, in, let in me tell society. you one thing. Gay does not start right now. Do you know where gay started? Where from the Bible? In the city of Sodom and Gomorrah. Mm -hmm. Gay has been there. Yeah, I, I think gay but people have been part of humanity for is, ever. They chose to ha be like that. Well, but we have who call themselves no. gay no. and lesbian. See, having children. See, but <laughs> I, I have a question for you. Yeah. Ha have you had many gay friends? A lot. You have a lot. Oh yeah. And, and I have lesbian gay friend, a, a lesbian friend and, too. And, and I do too. And and when you say they choose. You know that that's one of the areas where there's a divergence of opinion because, uh, you know, I have many gay friends and, and and lesbian friends and every one of them I've spoken to, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's not a choice. It's okay. what? D to be who they are. It's not a choice. That's mm -hmm. who they are. In mm -hmm. other words, they don't didn't wake up one day and said, "I'm going to be gay." Yeah. In other words, I I know gay. What guys, led them to it? I know gay guys who said, you know, I, I knew I was different when I was seven years old or six years old. And, I, you know, I, I, I have to take their word yeah, for it. Their word for it. Okay. And I, I've, never, I've, never met, I've never met a gay person who said, I woke up one day and just decided I was going to be gay. I disagree. In other words, people come out and... You know, they say, okay, I'm gay, for example, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, and many people that I've talked to, they, there's a point when they come out, but that is, is who they are. Okay, I met a gay lady, mm -hmm. a lesbian lady. He has two children. Mm -hmm. He's a good friend of mine. I said, why did you choose that life? You know what he told me? Security. He said, I belong to a group of people who you cannot touch. I said, you, do you think so? I said, why? Why can you not be touched? Oh, I'm going to say, oh, you do, I said, I don't think so. When you do something, they're going to fire you where you are. <laughs> they're going to what? They're going to fire her where what? she's working. He thought why? he belonged why? to a group. He, be, he said he belonged to a group of people where people cannot touch. Oh, so, so because he's taking an be advantage. A, to be a protected class. Yeah, protected class. Right. I said, that is wrong. You don't do wrong because you are a lesbian. You feel they can't fire you. Right. They will fire you. Well, I mean, there, there are always going to be people that, that, that take you, advantage of, of <laughs> one position or another. Thank you. And but he already, he has two children. And I watch a TV program. A lady said, I hate guys. I hate guys. Why was he saying he hate guys? Why? The reason is he has been cheated on. He said, I prefer to remain a lesbian. Even though you are a lesbian, would the lesbian girlfriend will not cheat on you? There's cheating everywhere. Well, sure. Yeah. I mean, I don't you see, think the mentality has to do is with so it. low that they don't well, raise. I don't of, understand of the, what you're saying. I said the mentality of the guy is so low. Because a guy cheat on him, she wants to become a lesbian. Would the lesbian not cheat on well, you? Well, you know, I I, I I, think you're talking about a specific case, and I, I don't know that person. But a lot of my gay friends who are in, in long-term committed relationships, quite honestly, and, and I say this with all sincerity, have been in committed I mean, I know a number of gay couples who have been in, in, in many, many years long uh, committed monogamous relationships. Good, good. Um, so, 
I mean, I don't really. I mean, more so than than a lot of my heterosexual friends. Okay. I mean, a lot of my heterosexual friends have been divorced. People have been separated. Things didn't work out. They go through relationships, and I, I, I honestly can count a bunch of gay couples that I know in Vallejo who have been together and committed long, long term. So yeah, I think everybody when they're when they're young, so. when they're young, everybody I think might have a time when they're experimenting or maybe a little more. No, I don't believe yeah. it. I know why. Yeah, I will explain to you. Mm -hmm. God who created man created every individual in his own image mm. be you a woman that is the image of god you are right be you a man that is the image of god you are god never make a mistake he's a perfect god when he creates a woman he creates her perfect to be a woman right. when he creates a man he creates the woman to be perfect to be a man he does not made a mistake oh i created you oh you're supposed to be a woman i have never read it in my bible god is a perfect and handsome god right well then then gay people must be part of his design yes right gay is part of god's design good but the i believe and my belief as gay and straight are quite different i agree and they may let me tell you one thing. Being a gay does not mean you are going to hell. I will okay. tell you the truth. Right. Being straight does not mean you are going to heaven. It's your relationship, sorry, your relationship with Christ. Okay. That's what matters. Right. What are your relationship with God? Well, I mean, part of the question that, that, that this leads into, Matthias, is, you know, when, when a person is religious, and there's religion and there's politics and there's separation of church and state yeah now you're obviously a very religious man and i i have no problem with that mm -hmm. but what what concerns me and i think what concerns a lot of people is the separation of church and state in other words you you're going to have people in Valaya who are christians you're gonna have jews atheists muslims all sorts so how do you reconcile your very strong religious beliefs your belief in, in Christ as a Christian with duties as a council member and your need to act in a government that is designated uh, very to be secular religion. secular so so talk to me about I mean obviously and and that's been one of the the um, obviously one of the issues and one of the areas of friction uh, between the faith organization and other parts of the community where there are fears people are afraid that um things like uh, dominionism and i'm just being very open with you okay, because okay, i okay. and i you know i just want to have just uh, chat about okay. it because because i think it's something that needs to be talked about and i can tell you a lot of other interviewers don't want to touch it <laughs> because it, it but it is something that people are talking about it's something that people are concerned about when they look at some of the things the vallejo faith organization and some of the other organizations uh, like the Harvest Evangelism um, and, and some of the other groups that it is associated with, one of the things that is described is to bring a Christian ideas into different forms of government, right? Okay. Different government as well as different parts of society. The marketplace, they talk about marketplace ministers, uh, they talk about bringing Christian uh, uh, moral ideas at any rate into the school so i'm i'm putting this out there and i'm being very open it's a good idea i'm going to bring and it i'm down hoping for you. you can explain okay i and, will and I clear will. up for me and either i either relieve or, or reinforce the fears of some people but okay i will let you t talk about um that. people should not be afraid having a christian as a board member i i don't think they're afraid of that but it's 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 basically Bring it, it, seems, it seems that the ideology is that, at least in some of the things that I've read, the, the ideology seems to be an, a goal of, of crossing the line okay. between separation in church and state. Okay. And you I want to get your thoughts okay. on that. You see, in my church, in our church, when I'm preaching, you don't talk of politics. That is me. 
Right. There's a difference between church and the government and politics. I may not like what people want. I need to love them. Mm -hmm. Be afraid. Our city is a secular city with different diversity. Elected a Christian should not bring his own fanatism to the communities. How do you see the people? How, how do I see the people? How or? do you see the people? How do you have the belief on them? We are not, we, anything, Christianity should not come into government because you are serving Jews, Hindus, Muslim, uh, gay, straight, Chris, uh, whatever tribe. You are not serving. When you said, well, we want to say, let me serve the Christian, you are discriminating. You don't need to be there. You are serving the community. I have friends who are Muslim, Jews, Hindus. I have them. I have all tribe, Catholic, Protestant, everybody. That's why people, oh, you are not like, I said, no. Are they, what I ask, are they created in what image? Image of Christian? Christian has no image. Image of Judaism? Judaism has no image. Image of Muslim? Muslim has no image. Image of other things, he has no image. But they are created in the image of God, who is the father of all religion. We should not use religion as a yardstick. We know we are serving the people. We are serving the common people. Religion should not, 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 not be there at all, at all. Love the way I love my child the way I love the other man's child. Care, religion should be backward. Because you are not serving religion. My moral is quite different from your way of belief. And I'll be telling everybody, I'm a born again child of God. We believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And I stand by it. But I should not be that belief, impose it on people. You can't impose your belief on human being. I can persuade you to join my religion, but I can't force it on you. What did they say? How many Americans today becoming Muslim every year? 20,000. What is the Muslim do? They are doing their homework. <laughs> <laughs> they are doing their okay. homework. We need to do our own work. How many Christians become Muslim? Because they are doing their own work. While we are sleeping, fighting ourselves between religion, this, the people are not fighting themselves. They are converting people. You see, that is the mistake a lot of Christians has made. A lot of other religions has made. We should talk to them in love. Let them know we love them. We don't chastise them out. No. Well, th th thank you, Matthias. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I think it was important that, you know, to, to, to get your, your take on that. And yeah. uh, it, it sounds to me like what, you know, you, you, you seem to be pretty firmly um, saying that the separation of church and state is something you, you oh, recognize. Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. There should be separation. Okay. There should be separation. But we know our country, America, is built on what? Built on what? Yes. Ref, our forefather in this country, what did they build America upon? Religious freedom. Thank you. Right. <laughs> and as long as it goes to yeah. everybody. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. so uh, uh, Matthias, thank you for, for, for answering the hard questions. Um, is, is there anything else you can think of that we haven't covered uh, that, that you want to talk about? Um, we want to talk about our education in this city. Mm -hmm. our, the school board are trying but they are not doing the best. Mm -hmm. I will tell you the truth. There's a lot they can do than what they are doing right now. We need a change in our school system curriculum. We need... But how How will you, I mean, as a, as a council member, um, you don't really have purview over the schools. You have, you have very limited, I mean, you can, you can have some influence by talking to people and 
facilitating things maybe that the schools need, but how will, how will you as a council member um, impact or, or affect those kind of changes? Okay, there's a lot I can do. Okay. One, I will go to every school where they have parent association in the school. I will be there. Maybe, I mean, do you think, uh, when I tell the you parent, think you'd be better off on a school board? No. <laughs> no, okay. I, I want parent association, I will be there. I will tell them, do you want your children, uh, because this type, this, this type, what will benefit them, what will make them be more good? You need to speak out. So They so speak out to the school mm -hmm. board members. Mm -hmm. I may not have influence. This is what we want. Do you want you to, if you do this, we don't want this. The school board are not dons. The intellectuals people were well learned. Mm -hmm. They will sit reason because they will not be there if there's no children in the school. Right. Well, <coughs> yeah, and that's, I mean, with the Vallejo school, that, that is, is one of the of problems is the average daily attendance because when the, the schools have problems and then parents take the kids out and they take the kids out, the schools get less money and that compounds the problem. So it, it's kind of a vicious cycle. Yeah, that is where yeah. they should learn to listen. So those people have their children in that school. They, when I talk about the school, parents should do more work than waiting for the school board or the teachers, everything. One, you don't give your children cell phone to school and be listening to music. I know phone is good to call. Mommy, come and pick me up. It's good. But there is phone in the school. They are allowed to use it to call their mom. But taking phone, listening to music, why the teaching is going on, I've seen it. Mm. And I stop the children, I've seen it, many of them. Yeah. I see children holding iPod or hold Blackberry. They need to me shaking their head like this. I say, what are you doing? <laughs> I want to be a rapper. Rapper? You are just seven years, you want to be a rapper? You can't even finish high school. You better finish high school, oh, no. Yeah. I just want to be a rapper. A rapper with a degree. <laughs> Before, we, we, how would they get the grade if they go to school? <laughs> but okay, so schools as, as as part of the overall arc of things that need to be uh, improved Modernized. in Vallejo. It needs to be improved. And, and, and obviously you can, you can encourage that, you can encourage the parents, but you've got very limited influence. What about the other aspects? The other? Of, like, you know, what's, what's, your, what's your vision for, for Vallejo moving forward? Give me, a, give me an, an idea about that. And, and, and I say this to all people that are running for the first time. Give me an idea, but, but give me one or two specific examples, specific examples of how uh, it can be implemented within the framework of government. Because lots of people that run, when they run, they have, everyone has great ideas. But the question is, g give me something that you can implement and how you will do it within the framework of, of, of government. Moving f everything forward in our city has a lot. Let example, job. This is my land. It's three miles around. You know that? Mm -hmm. Three miles. Yeah. Mare Island is a good, you know. Good place. If we install, I don't like casino. If we install okay. casino so, oh, here. Oh, so you're, so you're not a fan of the casino? I'm not afraid, but if we install mm -hmm. casino here, right. you know how much you going to bring? Over 10,000. Yeah. People will come, and we don't install casino. Mm -hmm. Why here casino is so, better? So do you, do, do you favor a casino? Oh, yes. You do? Oh, yes. Okay. I favor it. So you don't, think, you don't think that's a sin, though, gambling? It's, no. You know, it's, I say I don't like it. Okay. But it's going to bring, that, you yeah. see, we say sin, okay. we are not talking about that. We are talking sin to bring job to our city now. Right. I tell you, understand me. I'm just trying to reconcile. No, no, no. We don't, you don't bring that. Well, we are talking about government. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I tell you, understand me. If we establish casino here, why Vallejo is better than San Pablo, Cash Creek, you know why? Why? See, they can come through our boat. Mm -hmm. Most of those boats we most, well, most of those boats we work 24 hours to draw people very close here and they, they went to the casino to play. Mm -hmm. People will come from all other states. Buy more money. What about, what about access though? I mean, you've got access by, by boat, but um, it seems to me like access by road is very limited. In other words, the, the Mare Island Causeway, I mean, I, I, that needs serious repair to handle bus traffic or replacement. And then on the other end, you've got, you've got Highway 37. And if you think about Infineon Raceway, um, say a bus breaks down on 37 that's coming to the casino, bus coming to, breaks down on race weekend. 
Can you imagine the traffic jam? So how, if, if we did put a casino on Mare Island, uh, how do you deal with those uh, traffic and infrastructure problems? Okay, let, first of all, that's San Rafael Road. I disagree with that. That road is not a road. 30, it's, well, it's one of the access points. It's a, I call it a farm road. You right. know why? Too right. tiny. Right. It's supposed to be four lane. Yeah. Four lane here, four lane. I disagree. When I'm going to that place, what I say every day, if right. a big vehicle break that we all stuck. Right, and, and I'm just saying... We'll be hungry for the... the let's yeah. say the vehicle break down. How did you remove the vehicle? You right. cannot remove right. it. And that's Everybody a, will stop for three days. Yeah. And they that's need a, to, el to expand right. the road. I think four lay here, four lay here. That is right. what we will fight for. Not only that, even the road coming to Maryland, that bridge needs to be modernized. Okay. That is very... When we modernize that road, right. taxi cab, driving cab today, people driving cab can make money. Mm -hmm. Those buses will make money. Nobody will go to Cash Creek. I need Vallejo to be better than Cash Creek to play gamble. You don't, you don't think we're sort of, we would be, I mean, I think like a casino would probably take, when you think about the, and I, I'm just playing devil's advocate, no pun intended. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, when you look at something like a casino, it has to be Indian land, uh, which, you know, is neither here nor there in a lot of ways. I mean, there's pros and cons to that. Mm. But you're, when you look at going through, uh, from everything I've researched, going through Bureau of Indian Affairs and the government and all the uh, bureaucracy, you're, you're looking at a good solid 10 years, uh, easy, before something like that can happen. Are you sure? Yeah. I don't think so. And, you and know you're why? gonna have other casinos, other, cas other casinos are probably gonna object uh, or try to slow it down because there are other areas where they're looking at building casinos. So, you know, you're up against that kind of a situation and, and probably a considerable uh, length of time before that kind of thing gets transferred through Bureau of Indian Affairs, gets moved on down the line. So, so th I mean, to me, that's, that's kind of an obstacle, you know? No, I don't think, you know why? Why? There should be not be monopoly. Casino, well, there's, there's there, should and then there there's... should not be monopoly. Right. A monopoly style of entrepreneurial destroy yeah. society. But I, I don't think it's a monopoly. It's just, monopoly because yeah. it, we should not look at it that it's more casino I, yeah. should mainly for the Indians. No, if I'm elected. Well, but it's. I'm not saying they're mainly for the Indians, but it has to become a sovereign nation. In other words. To have a casino, it has to be a sovereign. The land has to be transferred to be sovereign Indian no, nation. No, no, I don't think so. It does. It does. Okay. Yeah, trust me on that. And and it just, that process takes a very long time. You know? Take an example. What I'm elected today. Yeah. And I see somebody from China mm -hmm. or from Nigeria or from India who has 10 billion to establish a casino in Maryland. Are you telling me I have to see permission from the Indians? Why? Because gambling is, isn't, isn't uh, uh, legal under most circumstances in California. I mean, the Indian casino is one of the exceptions where you can do it. It's not like Nevada. That is where we go for court for it. If you can give, what is good for the good is good for the Gandas. But that'd be, I mean, if you were going to change that, it would be on the state level. You know, yeah, that's it. the way we go court, go to court for it. Mm -hmm. So that it should not be monopoly, monopoly destroyed. It, but I don't think the Indian tribes would like that very much. No. Because they have all the competition. No, they, they need to have competition. Well, that is what we are talking about. Yeah. Monopoly destroyed. But, so, but as it, a council member, yes, that's, 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 that's something that's, that's you know, out, way outside. I mean, it's no, much no, no, bigger no. than I the city. I agree. We need to state. call them and let them know. We yeah. know Indian over Leo. We yeah. know. We need to call them, tell them, look, we know this is your territory. Mm -hmm. But can I drink water in your territory? <laughs> if well, they say, yeah. oh yes, okay. You want me to drink water in your territory? Good. Do you want to be my friend because I'm black? Or, or do you want to be my friend because you're an Indian? Do you want to be my friend? Say yes. The yeah. way we can work well, together. Well, we, we all want to be friends, but the, the <laughs> state laws we have to navigate. Yeah, we are, the that is where, who wrote the laws? Human. Well, yes, of course. A human yeah. can change the law right. to benefit right. every... Look, there, we should not be but a, but a, a dogmatic state, yeah. but in a, doing things that yeah. this See, is... But, yeah. Okay. See, I just, I just want to interject. This is, this is kind of where... This is where I'm, 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 I'm 
I'm, I'm hanging on to you a little bit besides. <laughs> Because, like I say, a lot of people, they run for council and, and, and they've got a, a lot of positive ideas. And, you know, there's, there's hurdles. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So you can run on the idea of a casino and, you know, we can look at pros and cons of it. And there are advantages and disadvantages to putting a casino on Mare Island. But the question of how to deal with, the, you know, navigating the law, dealing with the bureaucracy... And, and making it happen because I see and, and the reason I'm hard on people in the interview with this is because I see lots of people coming with they've got big ideas and then when they, they get into the mechanics of it that's it let me tell you so you know what they were not able to talk when they get in when what when they get in as a council member they were not able to move forward their ideas mm -hmm. they don't go to the voters mm -hmm. there's always a way to let people know that is why America is better than many countries. Mm -hmm. You can speak out through the voters. Obama said, if you don't do what I've sent to you, I'm going to tell the voters. Right. If I tell them and I, I'm elected, you don't do I'm going, to, I'm going to go to the people. Yeah. I will work with them to the city council member. I will not sit down there. This uh, is what we want. I, this is our city. I, I, I think what you're saying is, is that Part of the problem is, is is apathy, and I agree with you. And it, it is it is a challenge to get people to come out and vote yeah. for Leo. And and, and I agree no, that you have to problems. sell yourself. Like now, I'm going out selling myself mm -hmm. to people to what I believe. We right. I'm not fighting to that. If I'm a letter, let this BB company come and endorse me. Oh, you have to do this. You have right. to do that. No, but I will do it. But does it benefit the common man? That is what we, because the common man are the bedrock of voters. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Big men don't vote. <laughs> Some of them, it's how they'll be voting. They'll be in Japan or Honolulu, or they'll be in uh, uh, Dubai, enjoy themselves. The common people, they have nowhere to go. They are the one voting. We have to make sure we please the common people. Sure, sure. Well, and, and so, so let's move on from casino. I mean, okay. obviously, the, the, to do it, there are going to be hurdles. They're not insurmountable, but they're there, and, and you favor it. What about, what about uh, marijuana collectives? Oh, yes. You know, marijuana, mm -hmm. where do, where do when you I look that? at the statistics, I look at the research. Mm -hmm. Marijuana will bring money. What are the effects to the common people? Mm -hmm. The way I looked, the pro and con in casino. I look the pro and con in marijuana. Do you believe people that take marijuana say because of medical something, 98% mm -hmm. of them are lying? Well, I, I think there's a certain, certainly there are people that are helped by it. And, it and I've known not, people who are. No, they will not tell you the truth. I mm, will tell you. I, I, Let, I, wait, wait, wait. I mean, I have known people with cancer who were helped by it, but, but I agree with you. And even in an interview I did with one of the marijuana collective owners, um, you know, he, he, he's admitted, I mean, not every single person that comes in here needs it as a matter of, of, of life and death. <laughs> but be that as it may, let him, we, let we have over 20 of them. Okay. And, and whether everyone goes in there absolutely has got to have it as a matter of life and death, probably not. Okay. But we're in a, the situation now where we're looking at an ordinance, we're looking at... Um, writing an ordinance to uh, to tax these things we're looking at moratorium um, we're looking at a number of different ideas so so give me your your take go ahead a hundred percent I disagree with marijuana in our city okay one lot of homes marijuana have destroyed mm -hmm. one of many of the young ladies young men Taking marijuana, who dr who drop out of high school, are so many. Mm -hmm. I met a boy of 15 years mm -hmm. in the night. I asked him, "Where are you coming? From? How old are you?" First of all, he said, "15." Where are you coming from? He don't want to talk. I said, "Don't be afraid. I'm not a policeman." Have confidence. I'm like a father to you. I want to visit my friend. 
I moved close to him. His mouth was smelly marijuana. Mm -hmm. I said, you taking marijuana? I said, yes. Of what benefit to you? You know what he said? I just want to be high. Well, I mean, my friend gave it to me. Yeah. I, I want to be high. I said, what benefit? He said, yeah. you know what he just said? Nothing. He said, what of your grade in the school? I stopped school. I stopped school. My bad. I, I said, what is my, my bad is not an English. <laughs> but I mean, you, much the same thing could be said about alcohol and that's legal. Okay. Yes. So in other words. A alcohol is legal right. marijuana. It's legal drug. Right. It's a, because, you know what they are legalized uh, alcohol? Because many big, big men, do take it. If though it's, it's a legal licensed drug, mm -hmm. it does not help. But if it takes, in, in other words, what I'm saying is when you when you look at there's there's different ways of looking at at an issue like this in a sense that you can say this is legal and this isn't. So if you're doing this, if you're getting if you're getting drunk t t till you fall down every weekend, it's legal. If you're smoking marijuana until you you you're incapacitated every weekend, mm -hmm. it's not legal. Okay, you could make that argument if you're not on, you know, medical marijuana. So, you know, or have a card or what have you, the exception, so to speak, for someone with a quote-unquote condition. Mm -hmm. Be that as it may, when, when we look at these things, we look at, I mean, to me, I look at prohibition. Okay. Right? A prohibition of alcohol. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I don't think anybody's going to make the argument that that was a success. Um, and in terms of social destructiveness... Alcohol beats marijuana, statistically. There's no question about that. You are 100% right. more socially destructive. So when we get into a situation where you've got alcohol and people can go to bars and they can drink and it's legal, and you've got marijuana and there are these collectives and et cetera and so on and so forth, people can get the stuff. And y you look at it in terms of which is more socially destructive, which does more harm to society, I, I think there's very little question that, that it's alcohol. So basically my question to you is this. If, if you are a prohibitionist in the sense of you, you don't want to see marijuana, why not applying the same standard to alcohol? Okay, let me tell you one thing. I will tell you the two differences. Mm -hmm. I cannot apply those two differences, banning marijuana, banning alcohol. One, you see, alcohol, if anybody took an alcohol or is taking an alcohol regularly, gradual death is going. Right, you're going to damage yourself eventually. Thank you. But marijuana, instant death. Instant death? Instant one. A guy, why, why, why do you say that? Uh, that's what I want to explain to you. All right. When you are so high, even though you take knife to chuck a man with marijuana, some of them don't feel it. Mm. But pinch a man with alcohol, he's going to bull on you. Well, I, you know, I, I don't know. <laughs> he's just like, I'm going to disagree with you, Matthias. Okay, uh, if, you go, if you go to a, 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 big, a big festival where there's a lot of alcohol, versus you go to a reggae concert, okay? Mm -hmm. The heavy metal concert with people drinking alcohol, there's gonna be more fights versus, you can ask the cops this one. No, 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 I you agree, yeah. I agree. Alcohol, there will be more fight. Yeah. You know why? Their metabolism is totally zero or dead. Mm -hmm. Why that of the uh, marijuana is still correct? Mm -hmm. There's one thing I believe, I was, when I was in London, I went to a regular music uh, disco something. I w immediately I entered the hall. Oh my God! Smoke of marijuana. It just turned my eye. I, I just struggled to go. I don't oh, smoke. Yeah. I just struggled to go out. I felt. <laughs> <laughs> I still walk on. You're walking three feet above the ground, huh? I just entered not to two. I just struggled to go out. My I just turned. I just struggled to. Go. Don't feel bad, I don't hold my pot well either. Oh, no, no. please. <laughs> I know you don't smoke. No, I, I, I don't, I don't. You actually. know, I just managed to go out. 
my eye told me, mm -hmm. the, my niece who took me there right. to the place, I said, let's just go and socialize, yeah. took me there. He just came and said, uncle, uncle, what is going on? I said, I can't stand that place. I know you don't smoke, you don't drink, you don't do anything. I said, do you? He said, no, I'm used to here. Get out, let's go home. I took him. We start going home. I said, you want to kill me in this place? Yeah. Well, it's not your thing. And that's fine. I know? cannot withstand it. Yeah. Even though, when yeah. I see people smoking it, yeah. I cannot. But I can start with I don't people. like putting anything in my lungs either. I, I, but if I, people but, take alcohol, yeah. I may hear the other, it does not affect me much. Mm -hmm. But marijuana, when you are there, oh God. Well, different, different strokes for different but folks. But the, the I mean. problem is, if you put a marijuana man and a madman who take alcohol, is so destructive that right. it kills them gradually. Even when do operations, a man take an alcohol too much, he will wake up immediately. Mm -hmm. He will wake up when do operation because too much alcohol okay. on the system. Mm -hmm. But a man who tell marijuana know what is going on. We know there's a pro and con on both sides, mm -hmm. but the effect of marijuana is more destructive. You think it's that, more destructive? Oh, Lord. Okay. I know alcohol is a long term yeah. destruction. Yeah. I've seen people do themselves in pretty quick with alcohol. Doing good? Yeah, I mean, if you, you're pounding down a whiskey every week. An alcoholic doing good? No, no, I'm saying I've seen them do themselves in with oh, alcohol yeah. pretty, oh, yeah. pretty quickly. Yes. Oh. Uh, yeah. But that means... I mean, it, oh, you know, it takes several years, but I... All depends on the various type of alcohol. Yeah, well... Because when you take too much hot wine, mm -hmm. I don't say social wine. We have what you call social wine. What, Just what take, take little sip. Right. Oh, everybody is taking social that, wine. That's me, I'm a like. <laughs> you don't take much. You just take little sip. That is uh -huh. okay. Right. But when you take mm -hmm. a whole bottle of hot drink... Right. Another bottle of fun drink is yeah. worse than even beer. Sure. <laughs> I think well, that's me. It's like a lot of things. You yeah. can overdo it. You can overdo All those things destroy I lives. Mean, you know, I'm just, I, you know, I'm, I'm just trying to, trying to look at both sides of it. I mean, on, on the one hand, you, you, we talk about the casino and that can bring revenue. There's up and downside to that. Uh, you know, the medical marijuana thing, that may be facing some, some legal challenges. And that's still unfolding so so there are potentially issues there obviously but from the the social aspects you know I mean I guess you've got your that you've got your position on that that it's feel that it's more more socially destructive. Yeah. More, I mean a lot of people will disagree I have with seen, you I've seen a lot of my friends being uh -huh. destroyed by marijuana really but this guy was so good in school mm -hmm. but when a long run he become a madman mm -hmm. Go naked in the street, yeah. but hardly for his alcohol may get naked. When it cool down, they come to their senses. But marijuana enter the bloodstream to the extent that before they become normal, it's very difficult. Mm -hmm. Why alcohol will get normal immediately after the whole eye is clear? Maybe twelve hours. Marijuana will last years. That's why mm -hmm. we should stop marijuana. Okay. Well, I, I I think there are a lot of people that that you know just. In closing on that topic, I think there are a lot of people that will disagree with you, and I, and I, I think, know, I know, people. Yeah. Are, is and that is that is what they choose to do? Yeah, yeah. and uh, you know, I mean, I I, I would, I, I think the, uh, some of the science will disagree with you as well, but that's something we can <laughs> agree to disagree on. Let me tell you one thing: yeah. a lot of science research mm -hmm. on marijuana. Yeah, ninety-five percent of the doctors are lying. Okay, they know very well. Mm -hmm. I can buy a doctor, tell him okay. cigarette is good. Right. Whereas, how many people would the cigarette destroy? Right. But because of money, we should look beyond money. Mm -hmm. Right. When we look beyond money, we can do better for our citizens. Mm -hmm. But when we say quote unquote, what I get, what I get can destroy you. You can right. be a victim. Because if I should pay you back because I need money, one day, most of those people, their children will be affected by those things. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, so bottom line, pro-casino, anti-marijuana. Yeah. Um, uh, I, I think we, we covered a lot. Is there, you know, <laughs> we're coming back. Thank there. you. Yeah. And, and um, is there anything you want to add or, 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 or say to... 
Say to the audience. Let what I want to tell the audience is, I want you guys to vote me on November 8th because I will fight like a lion for you to make sure you get what you want. Not pleasing the wealthy, but to please those who are suffering like me. I need your vote. Vote for Matthias Isui Meme. The man who's here to make sure our city is turned around. They are doing good job in our city. I know, but we need to do better. We need to be excellent in everything we do. We need to have vision, a brainstorming, integrity, humility, humbleness. With that, we can move forward. Thank you. Dias, thank you so much God for sitting with you. me. Thank you. Thank you for, for answering the hard questions and, and uh, you know, knocking around some different ideas. Yeah. And, uh, with different ideas, we can go a long way because yeah. I know we cannot finish building a bridge overnight. It yeah. takes time. Good. What with zeal and seriousness, we can cut it short. Yeah, I, I hope we'll keep talking, and I, and I and hope you and I can continue to talk. Yeah, and yeah. Maybe build some bridges. Yeah. God bless Thank you. Thank you so much. All right.